All right, so I'm going to go over a basics of the terms and characteristics. I'm sure you'll have more detail in your other lessons here, but just some terms that I want you to know and sort of have an idea of what they're talking about. Okay, so the matrix. Every image is formed uh, and displayed with a grid. So similar to this one, it's called a matrix. It's how it's laid out. It's in rows and columns, image matrix. So it's made up of pixels or picture elements, as um, you might have heard it. Um, each pixel, it's going to have a number value and it determines the brightness um, of the cells. And each box has a range of how many um, gray values it can have. It's usually by bytes, so this B-Y-T-E-S word. Um, spatial resolution. So I, I know you guys have heard this term before, but it's really related to... Um, Pixel size, so spatial resolution. How detailed is your image? What can you see? The smaller the pixel size, the greater your resolution. So this image over here with small pixels is gonna give me better resolution, similar to this one here. So I want smaller pixels to get me higher resolution. You're also gonna have matrix size options. And you always want the bigger matrix, but smaller pixels for greater resolution. Field of view, so how big of a view is um, being imaged, right? So how wide open do you have your cones? Did you collimate? Collimation is automatically going to increase your image um, quality, right? There's two terms I have down here too, pixel and voxel. So you might hear voxel too. Voxel is your three-dimensional, uh, pixel is two-dimensional. So the computer manipulates data based on into these binary numbers, which is two digits. It's either a zero or a one, okay? So remember we, you saw in the images on the direct and indirect situation, we, your x-rays are either converted to light in an indirect system or in a direct system, we skip the scintillator part, converted into electric charge and then sent as, you know, the signal over in digits. So it's either a zero or one, um, for bits, eight bits equals one byte. And in one byte, there's 256 possible values of gray values here for each of these pixels. The brightness of the phosphor corresponding to each area covered by the pixel can be assigned. So your x-ray image in the background may have these numbers selected and that's what it's gonna sort of produce, okay? Pixel bit depth is the number of bits used to define each pixel, the greater the bit depth, the greater the number of tones. Now that can be represented. Um, you might see the term pixel pitch. It describes the distance between the pixels on the image and it's measured by the center of one pixel to the center of an adjacent um, pixels. The smaller the distance between the pixels, the better your resolution. All right. um, pixel density, you might see this, is the number of pixels per unit area. Sampling frequency is, when it's being read, the number of pixels sampled per millimeter as the laser scans each line of the imaging plate. Um, you might see this Nyquist frequency as well. That's another term. It's the relationship between the sampling frequency and the spatial resolution. So how detailed is your image? Analog to digital converter. So we know that your x-ray images are converted into this electric electrical signal, right? And into these binary numbers. So it needs to be then converted into a digital image. And that's where your ADC, analog to digital converter comes in. And that pr will produce the digital image, okay? Um, if you're using a photostimular plate, all right, this image will go along with that. The signal is in the form of analog data, then converted into a digital number, stored as one pixel on each image. Dynamic range, you're gonna, or exposure latitude, you're gonna use, hear, hear these terms throughout your time here, but. Dynamic range, the range of X-ray intensities a detector can differentiate. A high dynamic range provides the discrimination between small differences in X-ray attenuation. So, digital imaging provides a wide dynamic range. What does that mean? It means your error 
your range of error. So how badly can I screw up on my technique and still get a radiograph? Well, it's a lot easier with digital equipment than it was with film, right? So you know if you're, even if your technique's off, the computer is still gonna try and fix it for you and still get you an image. So it has a wider dynamic range, right? Image noise. The highest, um, what is image noise from? Mostly it's from scatter radiation. And who's the principal source of your scatter radiation? Your patient. So how can you control this? Using an appropriate technique and collimation. Quantum model or quantum noise is usually due to um, your technique choice. So you didn't use enough mass majority of the time. It's going to appear like this grainy appearance similar to this image here. So we didn't give it enough juice, right? We didn't hit it with enough mass because it's grainy, kind of mottled. because not enough photons made it to our imaging plate. All right. Signal to noise ratio, SNR or CNR, are really sort of similar terms here, but it's the ratio of the signal, so the x-rays that get to your image receptor, compared to the amount of noise. All right. A histogram is your graphical display of the pixel intensities that's distributed on the image. So you're each, each time you choose something on your control panel, so you choose PA chest or you choose PA hand. Each of those settings in your control panel has this graph for the pixel values, for the values of interest, where they think, where they think the um, gray values will be within that image. Um, so that's why it's important to choose the correct settings on your control panel, right? For that, okay. Spatial resolution, your ability to distinguish the individual parts of an object or closely adjacent images, right? So sometimes people confuse spatial resolution and contrast resolution. Spatial resolution is my details, so my borders of anatomy, the border of the humerus, um, can you see the border of the joint spaces within, um, you know, the metacarpals or something like that. Can you find a tumor due to its gray color being different than, you know, the color variance of the lungs? That's contrast resolution, right? Spatial frequency, it's how spatial resolution is measured. It's measured in line pairs per millimeter, okay? DQE uh, is, demonstrates the detector's ability for high quality images for a given X-ray exposure. So it's also measured as spatial resolution. Uh, MTF or modulator transfer function tells us how well a system is able to represent the object spatial frequency um, and it's expressed as the modulator transfer function. So your number ranges are between zero and one and I believe it goes by um, a point system, so it's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that. And then, but the closer you are to one, the better overall resolution. One is sort of an impossible number to get to, but in an ideal world, one is what you want, right? One is equal to 100% of image transfer. Contrast resolution. So these are your um, density differences of neighboring regions. And remember, contrast resolution in digital imaging is controlled by your lookup table. Subject contrast, which is your patient, your subject of different densities, that's controlled um, by the different attenuations of each tissue and KVP. And I gave you my elephant and penguin chart over here, right? Remember your short penguin who's black and white, they're high contrast and your penguin likes to get high. Your big elephant who's big and gray and wide, that's a low contrast. Lookup tables. Um, so the lookup table is the data that's what it's going to expect. So it's going to change the values. So your raw image controlled by the lookup table produces the image that you have, and it's a prime controller. So you're going to either use window level or window width to control that. Windowing an image um, is the ability to alter sort of 
your contrast of the digital image that's following the processing. So this is sort of a post-processing thing that you can do as a technologist. Window level, you can change the brightness. So I think of window level as I'm opening or closing a window shade. As I open it or increase my window level, I'm getting brighter. As I close my window shade or decrease in my window level, it's going to get darker. Window width is your contrast and the grayscale. So remember, window width, I think an elephant is wider than a penguin, and my elephant is my contrast. So window width is contrast. Wider, you're getting a... If your elephant gets wider, you've got more gray. So that's still your low contrast and long scale. If your elephant is narrower, then you're going high contrast and you're going to get a shorter scale.